videos and welcome back to the vlog everybody we are in downtown Fullerton on the clock I've got 407 Siri said that 445 is sunset we're gonna try to get about 10 black and white street photography shots it's, it's time's running let's go let me get my backpack right here I misplaced my clip thing here so I can't put the GoPro right there but maybe I can It'll look a little weird Just do something like that that looks crazy I mean I'm all cool with crazy and all but okay we don't need the GoPro what we need is this bad boy okay. oh, don't forget the camera all right let's go okay I'm ready to go I'm shooting on the Canon 5D Mark IV. I got the nifty 50 on the end here, the 50 millimeter 1.8 Canon lens. So let's go get our first shot. All right, this might be a complete bust. Um, I've got about 20 more minutes. I shot one shot that was decent. I think I, uh, I know I can do better. But 10 shots is going to definitely be a challenge, but that's why they call it a challenge. Let's get it done, Pablo, stop complaining. I just got a picture, I just got a picture of this little kind of fenced in area. Would have been so much nicer with a person in front of it. But like I said, beggars can't be choosers. Let's keep it going. Just got a shot of a local student who was out here doing some photography. Actually, she said she was in a film class, but I think she was doing some photography. That was cool, coming over here to the police station. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a shot of the neon police sign. Here's what one side of the sign looks like without the sun. Let's check out the other side. And that side has some partial sun. I'm out here to get some shadows with whatever sun we have left, so let's get this guy. All right, I think that shot turned out pretty good. I actually hid myself behind the shadow of this palm tree right behind me. I actually fit. <laughs> this police station is a really cool police station. It has like this retro art deco vibe to it with all these succulents and drought resistant plants. So let me get something here. I think I can get something here. Okay, quick check of the time. I've got about 15 minutes left. I've taken five shots. Just gonna have to spray and pray here and get myself five more shots. Doing okay though, I'm doing all right. I'm at shot number nine. I'm gonna catch you up on all the shots. We got about 10 minutes now before the sun sets and I've been running around downtown Fullerton seeing if I can get that, those 10 shots. I got this. All right, it's gonna do it. The sun has set, it is, 452 sunset at 445 it's blue hour now it's kind of ruining my black and white street photography vibe i'm gonna call it a day we're gonna go back to the studio and uh let's put these in the light room and see what we got all right see you back We're back in the studio and I've loaded up all the images into Lightroom and I've selected my 10 to 13 most favorite images. And what I've done now, you can also do as well, especially if you're just learning how to edit black and white photos. Black and white photos really does take the edge off a little bit. I think it's much different than editing color images because there's so much in a color image. But when you're dealing with black and white, you're primarily dealing with darks and lights. And that doesn't mean that you can't get really intricate with your black and white photography because there are some beautiful images out there. And as I go through my photography learning journey, this is something that I think any photographer can start doing right away and really just focus on what you wanna contrast, what you want a little darker, what you want a little lighter. I believe there's an ebb and flow to it that you'll come to a happy medium and you can really find yourself liking black and white photography. All right, so one of my tips or one of my hacks is that when you go into any type of photo editor, whether it be on your phone or whether it be on your computer, there is default themes, there is default presets, and usually when you go to the black and white side, there's gonna be things like contrast, punch, flat, soft, 
so on. They all have their own unique names, but you can select one of them and just apply it to the bunch. That gets a whole crop of photos that were shot in a similar time frame to be able to be edited very similarly, but yet each individual photo, you can go ahead and edit to your liking. So that's what I did. I used a black and white high contrast preset inside of Lightroom. Then I just ended up adjusting each of the images. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at all of these photos. Let's get into full screen. And this was my first shot. And I was walking across the street. I saw these young ladies across the way. I went up ahead, stopped in the middle of the street on my side of the street. So I shot this twice. This was the actual first shot. And then I lined them up right on the tree in the center. I thought that was gonna be the better shot, but I really ended up liking this one better. I wish I would've got them further back in the crosswalk, essentially where the 25 is, but in the crosswalk, I think they, I think it would have set them off a little better, but nonetheless, I'm happy with this photo. I thought at first this was just gonna be a throwaway photo because it was the first one of the day, and man, it actually became one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Let's move on to the second one. Where this is the back of a business. I think this is um, actually a closed cafe on the other side, and so this is kind of a sliding gate. As I mentioned in the vlog, I really wish there was somebody walking through there, but like I said, I had a lot of urgency and I wanted to shoot a lot of different images in a short amount of time. That was my challenge to myself. And um, I think this shot turned out okay. I had a little bit more on the top, so I pulled that down so there wasn't so much. So the building behind it could be set off from the foreground. It looks like there's some graffiti at the top that's been painted over, but I wish that graffiti was there because then it would, it would be a little bit more punchy in that area, but nonetheless, I like this photo as well. This one, I don't think it's one of my favorites, but it was really cool. I saw this young lady taking photos across the street as I was approaching. My vantage point was me a little bit ahead of her. I snapped the shot and then I actually approached her and said, hey, so what are you shooting photography of? And she said she was shooting it for one of her classes that she has um, at her high school for film. So I thought it was really cool. We both went on our way. And again, street photography is kind of a fast hustle. It just happens and it happens right in front of you and it happens fast. The next one, I'm not really that happy with. I thought it was gonna turn out so much better, but I was losing a little light here. It actually challenged me not to think about the shot too much and just try to set the shot up and and get it. I knew I wanted the police neon sign, which wasn't lit at the time, by the way. So I just added an element to the police sign itself to lighten it up a little bit. And, you know, it is what it is. Let's move on to the next one. I just couldn't get this one into focus the right way. And this is the police station. I was really thinking that this was gonna turn out more contrasty than it did. Essentially framing this one out, I probably took on more than I could handle in this shot. Probably would have been better served at just working on those arches in the background and maybe the clock tower. Nonetheless, again, a learning experience. Let's just move on to the next one. This one also might be a throwaway. I saw my shadow and decided to put my vlogging camera up and take this shot. It kind of looks like Darth Vader's holding a vlogging camera. It's okay, it was a fun shot. Okay, this one was fun. I'm not sure what I was thinking here. I love the brick wall. I love the stairs. I love the bikes. Man, I was really digging it. I was like, this is the shot. Man, this is the shot, Pablo. Oh yeah, you're crushing it. Um, it's okay, it's okay, it's fun. All right, the next one was really fun. I felt like I was hovering over this couple because I saw them on one side and then I, I ran into them on the other side and actually I'm glad they moved into frame because um, the man was on the cell phone. I don't know who he was talking to, but he was certainly trying to figure something out with the train. It looks like they were picking somebody up maybe from the train station. Didn't look like they were going anywhere. All right, this one, I really wanted it to be better than it is just because at first I created an image of him further out uh, from the arches, but I didn't like that shot, so I waited just a little bit longer. As he got in further into that little tunnel area, I snapped that shot, but the problem was that I wanted the full arches on both sides. There was a guy coming on the right-hand side that I actually cropped out. There's a lot of different textures and angles in this image. Yeah, I like this one. Okay, the next one is also one of my favorites. It might be my favorite. I'm just into reflective or reflection type 
images. It's glassy on the bottom. So the last couple shots were have been at the train station and this was on the old side of the train station where it's kind of shut down and being remodeled and there was just a puddle of water even though there hasn't been any rain for a couple days. So I don't know where that water's coming from but I'm glad it was there, yeah. I just try to lighten up enough of the reflection so it would pop, but still put a little bit of moodiness or darkness around the edges of that water. So yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. I think this is gonna make my Instagram. I think on to the last one, I was shooting reflections into this water in many different angles. And then I got up against this post, kind of try to frame him out a little bit. It actually works, and he was taking a little smoke break before I think he got on a train. Um, actually, I have one more here. It's an old train that's permanently docked and represents part of the old station, the old Fullerton station there. There's a lot more ground and depth to this shot. It just wasn't working out the way I envisioned it, so I definitely cropped in here and just tried to get some texture going. I just wanted it to be gritty. And this was a quick shoot. It was a quick shoot. It only took me about 45 minutes total to get out there and actually practice some of the things that I wanna get better at. I hope you enjoyed this series of black and white photos that I shot. And leave me a comment down below and let me know which one was one of your favorites. What's your favorite type of photography? Are you into black and white photography? Are you into long exposures, landscapes, street photography? What's the kind of stuff you like to shoot? I'd love to talk to you about it down in the comments below. I certainly appreciate you watching today. Remember, subscribe if you're not subscribed leave me a message down below you know i love talking to you and give me a like if you liked any part of this video remember always sprinkle a little bit of fun in your life and when you're having that fun remember to always keep it fun enough vlogmas day number 15 is in the books we are moving right along people all right outro let's go bing